put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version, and the link is in the description box. The Hobbit, Desolation of Smaug, 3D movie view. The movie starts where the first one left off. To avoid any spoilers for the first movie, I will not detail exactly where that is. The Thirteen Dwarves and Bilbo are still being chased by Azog and the other orgs that orcs that sound like someone accidentally knocked over a you know game of Scrabble. And they have to find shelter. They do find some help, but Gandalf will have to take care of some other things and gives them some important advice before they have to make the very dangerous journey through Mirkwood and with, without giving too much away, basically it, it goes from there and they are well on their way to getting to the Lonely Mountain and the Kingdom of Erebor. Thorin really has got it in for his granddad's crown jewel, just the one. And that pretty well covers the plot. I suppose the 3D is good to, to talk about early on, as well as the high frame rate. If you've already, you know, if you watched my video from last time about the high frame rate, this is basically the same thing. I'm doing this for people who only watch this video. Basically, it's going to take you maybe 15 minutes for your eyes to adjust to the... I don't know, the, the exact way it's done with the high frame rate. And after that, it's, it's amazing to watch in a high frame rate. It really feels like it is right there, like you could reach out and touch it. And yeah, it, it really heightens the experience. It does really wear on your eyes though, so do not, you know, rest your eyes for the day you watch a high frame rate movie, especially one this long. <laughs> and you'll be fine, and it's well worth it for these two movies, and probably the third one as well. And even if you do not watch, excuse me, high frame rate, excuse me, definitely go for the 3D. This is one of those great uses of 3D where it just really heightens the atmosphere, like you can almost feel things right in front of you without it necessarily having to shove things in your face all the time. And yes, sometimes they do shove things in your face, but they use it so sparingly that when it is done, it's really effective. There's some really great things done with the, with the poking you in the face thing with Smaug that I refuse to give away. And yeah, it, it's also just, it's done so rarely that it doesn't feel... Yeah, it's just, it, they, they don't overdo it. And it's not, like, obnoxious. You know, there, there are some movies where, like, if you watch them out of 3D, you can really say, well, that was a 3D shot, that was a 3D shot. <laughs> I rewatched Beowulf recently. I've never actually seen that movie in 3D, but I can tell where exactly they really wanted something to poke right out at the audience. And it's really obnoxious when you watch it in 2D, and the shot just lingers 
on the thing that we're supposed to go, oh, yeah, just... It's an effect, it's not an excuse to, you know, be lazy with, with filmmaking. Anyway, it's not a carnival ride. So anyway, this... This is very much the, the middle film of the trilogy with the good and the bad of that. Like, you know, The Two Towers, it doesn't have too much of a beginning or ending. And the... And it is also very much the Empire Strikes Back of the trilogy. We... <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm not gonna expand on that because you can probably figure out what that means and if you can't then you shouldn't so yeah basically this does some things a lot better than the first one and I think that is just something that is it's an aspect of these two trilogies that just the first movie in both trilogies kind of takes its time and really gives us a setting and lets us... Well, yeah, anyway, just delivers the setting and then not too much plot, not, not really overwhelming us with plot, at least. The first Hobbit movie can overwhelm you, but not with plot. And some people rightly complained about that. I was not one of them. But I can I can appreciate that the plot did not move very fast in the first one. And I agree that it, you know, in principle, a movie should move its plot along. And this one does. There's basically no time where the plot isn't really moving or any scene that feels like, well, that should have just been cut or something. And... Yeah, it's... I, there are maybe two scenes where they're in a little bit too much of a hurry, and thus things aren't really done justice because of the the worry of, of boring people, basically. And it, that's a little unfortunate, but it is, you know, well worth... As, a, as the overall, it, yeah, it really keeps things moving. Now, between watching the first one and now, I guess, I received this as a gift, the, the book of the movies. And that means that I read the first part of the book after watching the first movie, and now I read the second part of the book just about, just, you know, guessing about where it would end, the, the movie would, bef just before watching the movie. So I knew a lot of what was coming, and, and this is where, you know, as an adaptation, this is not that, like strict to to the the overall events it a number of things are changed like the what it maintains is the basic order of things and the overall result of where they go and what happens there i will use the first encounter in the yeah in in both as an, an example. Basically, right at the start here, they run into Bayorn, who is a skin changer, and he can take the shape of a bear. And in the book, there's this elaborate thing where Gandalf calls in one dwarf, then another dwarf, then two dwarves at a time, and it just, it takes forever for and, and they retell the entire story to this guy to try to get him to help them. And in the movie, he shows up. He has a great entrance. He shows up. They talk. That's it. They, it's, it's literally very 
much cut down and really at the end of the day you might almost say oh well couldn't that have been cut not entirely because he does give them like horses or something so you know something is accomplished but all this other stuff it's it's trimming the fat i suppose you could say i think i'm mixing metaphors but yeah it's it's cutting away the stuff that doesn't really need to be there and isn't forwarding plot it's just more of the world, you might say. And I think it does a, a great job, but if you do, you know, if you hold to the book as just, you know, should not be touched, should not be changed very much, it is changed quite a bit. And that's where, from what I understand, I've never read The Lord of the Rings, but from what I understand, those three movies stick to the films, stick, stick to the books very closely, and with this, not, not that much, there's a lot added that really, yeah, it's, it's tremendously changed in some ways. Now, in my personal opinion, I find the movie works better, but I'm not really I'm not into fantasy, I'm, and I'm not, it, I, I'm not really the intended audience for the book. The, basically the book is, it can be somewhat silly, it's supposed to be, you know, child, accessible to children, it's kind of a fairy tale, and the movie kind of ties more things together and goes darker. like. You know, like the the first Hobbit movie as well. The, this is Lord of the Rings movie dark instead of you know Hobbit book light, with still some of the lighter aspects. There's still a lot of charm, and it can be accessible to children. Although this does not have as much humor as the first one. In fact, possibly a lot less, and it certainly isn't. The humor is never quite as as childish as it could get in the first one. Some some of the jokes in the first one really are very much just for for children, and in this and and that's where this this one gets a bit darker. Where you know the first one the first one has its serious moments, but this one has more of them, and they linger more, and the. The comic relief is still great, and it's still this kind of thing of just, it really helps to keep it from being overwhelmingly dark, but there is still more darkness here. We, as, as I said, Thorin is very much after the Arkenstone, and the, the ring in Bilbo's possession is also very dear to him, and they've now been, you know, Bilbo's had the ring for some time now, and the the Arkenstone is coming, getting closer to Thorin, so we just might see some changes in them on behalf of the proximity of these artifacts. Now, the... without saying too much, they, they have to make it through Mirkwood, and it's this dark magical forest, and it seems just like endless, and they're, they're told before they go in, stay, stick to the path, because if you lose the path, you'll never find it again. And it does have this really evil, nasty, claustrophobic feeling to it. Like, I mean, it's a forest. You wouldn't necessarily think that you could feel like, you know, you're suffocating and, and it's just, there's no way out. And the movie does it wonderfully. I mean, that was one of the things I really liked when reading the book. And it worked really well in the movie. It, I, I loved it. Now, the... 
what this something this also does that the first didn't so much. I should maybe also point out from from now having read some of the, the book. There is more plot to this portion of the book than the first. And, you know, obviously one could have opted for, again, trimming the first one down to just basically the plot. I'm not sure it would have been three movies. And it, I mean, the, certainly the first one, if it was supposed to just cover that amount of plot, it would not have been three hours. It might have been an hour and a half or something, but yeah. So, <laughs> make of that what you will. And again, keep in mind, I love the first movie. I love that we get to see so much more of just, it's, There's never too much Middle Earth for me. Now, yes, what, what this does that the first didn't... The first is very much this series of encounters that don't really last beyond the, the one thing. Like, they'll meet a character and then do something, move on to the next. Meet another character, move on to the next. In this one, we're introduced to a couple of characters, and then they stick around. So, we can actually explore these characters over the course of the film, and that's very interesting. That's much more compelling, obviously, than just meeting characters and not really getting to know them. And yes, one of the characters we meet and who sticks around is indeed Legolas. And he is joined by the owner of the best belt ever, Tariel, Tar I think that's how you pronounce it. And yeah, it's she's of... Honestly, before I saw her on the cast list, I wouldn't necessarily have picked Evangeline Lilly to play an elf, but... Now I kind of hope that they just keep, you know, once once the third movie is out, if there's more stuff where she could play an elf, I, you know, I, I go for it, you know, another movie series, television series, cosplay, sexual fantasy, anyway, yeah, the, the, we get to see more of Will, Lee, Lee Pace, Amazing. Just, I, the, the, there's a force to him, like, dude's king of the Mirkwood Elves. Okay, he's not just some guy, and he has a lot of power, and he carries it with such dignity. I mean, you might have seen, like, the, the you know, still photos, I think he might be in at least one of the trailers with the face. He's got this, this... Funny for he's got a little bit of, of the, the reindeer thing going on. He carries it with just, you know, you, you, I mean, nobody chuckles once you actually see him in the movie. Well, almost no one. Just, I love this guy. I really, and, and, yeah, there is so much, there's, there's this one bit where he is just reacting to something said. And he doesn't really say anything, and it's like, Several seconds where you just see his face and his eyes, and man, he just he he channels all of his acting, all of his emotion just into his eyes, excuse me, and his face, and it just shines through. Like if if his eyes and face could reach out and grab you, they would. It's just fantastic. Everything relating to elves in this pretty much is awesome. Now, the for those who left the first movie thinking that they got too little smog, this is the movie for you. This you don't see him from like early on, but once you see him, it's not just a glimpse. And there's this thing of once once you once you show more than just you know a shadow or you know a silhouette of something that it might lose its power and mystery. No, doesn't happen. Not not with Smaug. 
he's, he's terrifying. Benedict Cumberbatch, can your voice like be used as as like green energy because it is it is extremely powerful, and yes, I I dude got dude get some lines that like you're like no one you you see it on paper no one could make this sound good. He makes it sound good. He makes it sound amazing. Just the the whole thing with yeah. I yeah. Amazing. And the let's see. There are more consequences in this one. The the first is a bit just, you know, a fun little adventure that they go on, and not too much really happens that lasts. In this one, things happen, and they last. Yeah, I, I will not be saying more about that. The scope is very much felt. There is... I, sh I shouldn't give examples, but there are several shots where you see someone you already know, a character you already know, in relation to the surrounding area or what have you, and it is just amazing. It, you just really get a sense of just how huge something is, or how, how vast the, the difference in size is. Now, the... This does, again, very much have the charm of these, you know, the, these dwarves are very much, you know, they, they can be a force to be reckoned with, but they can also just be kind of fun and charming, and, you know, they, again, very much are the unlikely heroes. You know, you, you see that you don't have to be, you know, a big guy or slim or really agile to be important, to be, to do something of great importance. The effects are amazing, and there's, there's probably more CGI than practical effects in this, but it, it never really gets lost. Like, there's always a reaction shot to go with something you know, big happening, it, it never disappears into just an effects show. There, there's at least one bit in the first where it almost gets, you know, go on for too long and it's just, yeah, it, it's, it doesn't work for as much time as it goes on for. And that never happens in this. The, the action scenes never, you know, outstay their welcome and, yeah, it just really keeps everything moving very nicely. There's nothing really outstays its welcome in this, pretty much. Now, the... I suppose I should mention some more about characters. We meet Bard in this one, and he's basically, you know, a loving father, and he he works in this, I don't know, small town village, and he is probably the most compelling character in this movie. There is so much that goes on with his character, so much, so many different roles, so much that, so much there, so much meat, and it is fantastic. And you know, it's it's Luke Evans sporting the pedo beard, mustache thing, and yeah, he he just owns it. He's very impressive in, in the role, and let's see the... I 
I suppose that might more or less cover it. I will say that the ending is, it's a cliffhanger, and, you know, you, you might want to have something to take out your anger on afterwards, you know, an annoying, you know, younger sibling, a a mirror that you were going to throw out anyway, you might be really angry at where, decide, where did they decide it to cut, but keeps us coming back, doesn't it? So, yeah. And, yeah, I <laughs> watched the movie. It's, it's a ton of fun, and, yeah, it... It was everything I had hoped it was, and a bit more. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.